Okay, I think we're ready to start placing our purlins. The first thing I'm going to do is create a ridge pole. And in order to figure out where that ridge pole is going to go, I am going to um, I'm going to make it out of a 4 by 6 timber. So from the midpoint, I'm going to move over to the left 2 inches. And again to the right 2 inches. And I'm going to take my rectangle tool and line it up with the midpoint. I'm going to create a 4 inch by 6 inch rectangle. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my um, dimension tool, figure out what I have left over from this point right here all the way down to the end of my rafter. I have 108 and 1 8 inches. Well, 108 is easily divisible by 4. That gives me 27 inches, and that's a pretty good span between... Uh, purlin. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, put them on 27 inch centers. Since I'm on the left hand side, I'm going to make some lines to line up all the left hand sides of my um, purlins. So the first thing you need to do is create a line that goes anywhere straight across that rafter. It'll be pink. It'll be pink when it's going straight across. So that's at a 90 degree angle. That allows me to create some guidelines. So if I create a guideline, if I create a guideline and line it up with that point right there, that's where I'll start. And then from that guideline, I want to go to the left 27 inches. And I'm going to come down here so I can see them. I'm going to do it again, 27 inches. It should snap to it. And I'm going to do it again, 27 inches. And one more time, 27 inches should get me uh, that one doesn't want to snap. So we'll just write 27 per turn. And that should get me to within 1 eighth of an inch of the end. Now, in actuality, I'd want to extend these rafters tails just a little bit further. So I'd have a little bit of a um, little more wood here than an eighth of an inch. I'd probably want about two inches. But for the purpose of this model, I think this will be fine. All right. I'm going to have my purlins run beyond the rafters in order to have an overhang. So I need to take a parallel line and bring it up. I'm going to come up two inches. And from that line, I'm going to come down. Or from the edge, I'm going to come down one inch. We're going to cut one inch notches. All right. And then each one of these is going to be four inches wide now that I've got all my guidelines set up I can go in and edit the rafter but to do that I've got to go into the bent component so double click on that your guidelines will become fairly faint, but you'll still be able to use your line tool and connect the intersection points. That one's a little tricky to get a hold of there. Into a rectangle and use your offset tool. to Push that back to its limit or eight inches. And it'll become a notch. And I'm just gonna do that to all of them. We'll speed this up a bit. I'm not going to bother making the notches on the other side, but what I will do is I'll come in at the ridge pole. I'm just going to flatten the top of that, and that would make it a lot easier to notch the ridge pole onto the rafters. Clicking outside of the um, component, I now need one more guideline from this top edge down to six inches. And that'll allow me outside of the component to draw my purlins. Be 
because they're drawn outside of the component, I can manipulate them separately from the rafters. And again, I'm only going to do one side because once it's complete, I can copy and paste it to the other side. If I use my push-pull tool, I can pull those out towards me uh, two feet for my overhang. I may have a few extraneous lines here and there, but I can go back and erase those afterwards. I can then spin around to the other side, see how they all line up. Spin around to the other side and push-pull them the entire way, which would be 16 plus 2, or 18 feet. Each one, 18 feet. At which point, I can take my eraser tool and erase all of these lines. Zooming stent to get it in the center. And now I would like to highlight all of those rafters and copy them. So if I draw a box around them, I should get all of the rafters and nothing else. I can Command C, Command V, copy and paste them. And it looks like I got a little bit extra there, but that's all right. That'll just line up over the, the other one. Now let's go ahead and get rid of that. All right, look at them from above using my rotate tool. I can spin them all the way around 180 degrees and then using my move tool I can grab a point and come in and overlap it onto the other rafter, the other ridge pole, and that should complete our frame. The only other thing you might want to do is go ahead and use the paint bucket and some colors. I'm going to go down to wood choose a nice light wood that looks like pine and start filling in various surfaces. And you can make sure that you get all of them. And that would be the complete frame. And I'll leave it up to you to figure out how to put a roof on it.